you read a lot and your Facebook feed is you're always posting like, what are you reading? Which is cool because you get, we get to see what you're reading and then you get to see what other people are reading. And it's so a really many. neat yeah. exchange for bibliophiles. Mm-hmm. Um, who are, you, let's say like two or three, I don't, as many as you want, current Christian voices that every person watching this should be familiar with especially at this moment in time um who would you say it can be a scholar it can be an author um theologian Mm -hmm. just who Mm -hmm. are any that have really like dropped on your radar yeah um so i joined twitter three years ago in part so that i could kind of follow conversations in the wider christian world and my biggest surprise in joining Twitter was Beth Moore. Yeah. I knew her as the author of women's Bible studies, and I haven't been part of very many women's Bible studies because I've been in mm-hmm. school so so much myself or teaching myself. Um, but she is just a breath of fresh air, mm-hmm. pointing people to Jesus and having sassy and deep um takes on uh, what's going on in the world. So Beth Moore is one of my current heroes. Esau McCulley is Mm -hmm. um, solid. He's a friend of mine. And um, his book, Reading While Black, has made a big splash. But he also writes every month for the New York Times. Mm -hmm. Um, Because he's writing for the New York Times, he doesn't say as much on social media. He doesn't give his hot takes quite as much. Mm -hmm. But any chance you get to hear him talk, listen because I think he is a a sane, studied, and prophetic voice for our time. It's so cool seeing his rise. Esau started Gordon Conwell in South Hamilton the year, my second year was his first year. Yeah, And the year before he came to campus, he did a visit, I guess, where you come up for a weekend and stay in the dorm. Mm -hmm. And so he stayed right down the hall. And I I remember one night, I think for most of that weekend, I think we were kind of two of the only people around uh, but we just connected, but both from the South and, and mm-hmm. I'd grown up in a, a predominantly black church that dad mm-hmm. pastored and he was coming out of the black church, but was going into Anglicanism, which mm-hmm. was a whole novel mm-hmm. thing for a lot of people. Yeah. But he was, it was really cool. Just, uh, we, we, I think we went and saw movies together and we just hang out on campus. And since then seeing his like meteoric rise, yeah. it's, there's a few people that I'm like, like, oh, they're really making something of, like, God's using them. Like him, Nijay, Gupta, yep. Um, yep. you know, people, you, people that I knew, like, before. It's just, I think it's so yep. cool to see how everybody's paths are kind of, like, intertwining, but also yep. expanding into different areas. I definitely, yeah. rec- I, I echo what you said, Beth Moore. I was, back in the day, I was a little more critical when she was kind of writing what I thought were, eh women's mm-hmm. Bible studies that were kind of, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I've had some critiques of her stuff in mm-hmm. the past, mm-hmm. but you are exactly right. Her public presence and the yes. way she Social has, commentary. Yeah. Yes. And at stood cost, up to. At cost to herself, you know, yeah. and she, she's lost millions of dollars by yeah. disassociating with the Southern Baptist Convention by yeah. pulling her books from Lifeway. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. She's, she's stood up for what she felt was the right thing to do. Yeah, I've I could yeah. not agree more. I, she is she has very very much impressed me in, in yeah. what she's become these past uh, I don't know ten years or so. Yep. Um, yeah, very cool. Do you have any others? Yeah. Any other names that you want to put on people's radar? Sure. We've already talked about Chris Wright. I echo mm-hmm. everything you've said about him. Sandy Richter, Sandra Richter yes. is another just amazing Bible teacher. Um, she does a lot of accessible Bible study stuff. Um, She has studies out on Psalms and Isaiah and Jonah, I think. Mm -hmm. And she has a book called Epic of Eden, which is a Christian entry to the Old Testament. My favorite thing she's done is her book, Stewards of Eden, which is about environmental care, Mm -hmm. um, environmental stewardship, and what the Bible has to say about the environment. And she does a lot of work on uh, what are actual creation care problems, like she talks about uh, food production and mountaintop mm-hmm. removal and um, just various practices um, that are not sustainable. 
and how the Bible calls us to a different way. And I, I think, you know, every time she opens her mouth, it's just really solid content. She has her PhD from Harvard in Old Testament and she is sharp. Yes, I agree completely. Yeah, I just shared a video of hers. Mm. Just a quick two minute video of somebody asking her about all and she just wove all of this stuff into this just amazing yeah. off the top of her head response yeah. that it's like the culture needs to see this is evangelical Christianity at what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Like at its finest. Um yep. and there I yeah, absolutely. So I, as part of Disciple Dojo's YouTube ministry, I do kind of more in-depth reviews of study Bibles mm -hmm. that are out there on the market. And I think I know the answer, but I want people <laughs> to be able to hear what study Bible or study Bibles does Carmen Imes recommend the average person have on their shelf? I think um, I've loved your series of reviewing study Bibles. That's a great service for people. Um, the one that I have my students buy is the, is the Cultural Background Study Bible uh, by Zondervan. Uh, you can get it in NIV or New King James or NRSV. But people need to know what they're getting into if they get this Bible. This is not an application. It's not a life application Bible. Right. It's not full of warm fuzzies um, or inspiring tidbits. It's full of information about the historical and cultural backgrounds of the Bible to help you figure out what is going on. There's a lot of weird stuff in the Bible that just, it seems weird to us because we are in such a different cultural context. And so this is um, accessing archeology span and um, ancient texts and just giving us context. So for example, I just opened randomly to Psalm 74 and there's an article about chaos monsters um, mm. along with illustrations. It's a full cover color study Bible. There's a lot of great information in here. So if you just feel like, oh, I want to know what the scholars know about, about the cultural and historical backgrounds of the Bible, then that would be like kind of one-stop shopping for you mm -hmm. to, to access that's a, that. Yeah, that's a great one. And John Walton's the editor of that, isn't he? He edits the Old Testament and okay. Craig Keener on the New Testament. So two of the top evangelical scholars today. Yeah. Were, was, was Walton working on that while you were studying at Wheaton or had it already come out or already been finished, I guess. Um, I suppose he might've been, let me look at the date. So here's, here's about John Walton. He gets to work at like five in the morning and writes until seven and like churns out all, he churns out like five books a year, four books uh -huh. a year, lots of articles and stuff too. Um, but he does it all before 7 a.m. So he never looks rushed and he always has time to stop and talk. So he probably was working on that yeah. while I was there. Um, I graduated I'm, I'm sure in 2016, there's, so. there's, there's some insight in there that he probably got from you that went uncredited. Um, I doubt, so. I doubt it. He, the, the insights in there come from his Zondervan Illustrated Bible Backgrounds commentary, which had lots mm -hmm. of contributors. And then it's just like sort of shrunk down to fit in a Filtered study Bible. Down. So the Bible Backgrounds commentary is five volumes for the Old Testament, four volumes for the New yep. Testament. It's, it's a lot packed in. Yes, I use those. As those were some of the ones I used doing the study through Torah for sure. Nice. Um, that's a good recommendation. And I agree again, if, if you're watching and you want to see more about that particular study Bible, I'm going to put a link in the description to our disciple dojo review of the Bible. Mm -hmm. What is the Cultural name? backgrounds, cultural, cultural backgrounds, backgrounds study, Bible. study Bible. You yep. can also check out his Zondervan Bible background commentary, which is what Carmen was talking about. It's the big five volumes. Um, yep. Lots of pictures for those who like pictures. Lots of pictures. Yeah, there yeah. is.